Hi there, and welcome back to the CKM Red Rugby League channel. We hope you are all well. It is another beautiful Tuesday, sort of, and uh, the team list have just come out. Uh, plenty of changes to go through, plenty of stars returning, plenty of stars missing as well. So we're going to go through that. Uh, as ever, Luke Jobson is here to take us through the team list with myself. How are you going, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm going to apologise to everyone in advance. If you hear murmuring in the background, I'm at, I'm, I'm at my parents' place. I'm seeing the little sisters for the next couple of days. So we might have a couple of special guests, but <laughs> not too bad, mate. How are you? Uh, I'm going well, mate. Yeah, no complaints. Looking forward to, to getting through these team lists and uh, giving out our tips, See see how that goes. Uh, as ever, RCR products are back to sponsor this video. Head to their website going along the bottom now using code CKM to get 20% off your full order. Go go give them a like on the socials as well. They're all going to be linked. So go check them out. Uh, and uh, with that, then, we will get straight into the team list. We start off with the Parramatta Eels taking on the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Parramatta... Uh, Pretty much unchanged are in their bench. Davy comes back in onto the bench. South's a little bit of a change up as well. Knight comes back in. Um, I mean, the Eels didn't really deliver last week. They, they beat the Storm, but they, it wasn't convincing against a Storm side that was missing a lot of their stars. South's have got a lot to lose at the minute. They're, they're hanging around the bottom of the eight. I mean, the gap the gap has been closed. Uh, sorry, the gap has been opened a little bit as well with their win last week. Um, how do you see this one going? Yeah, it wasn't convincing from Parramatta last week. Um, we're not going to say no as a Parramatta fan to a 14-0 to win against the Storm. You know, we always want a little bit of revenge after them cheating for the 9 grand final, but enough about that. Um, yeah, the Rabbitohs came out and just absolutely slaughtered. The, the Sea Eagles last week. It was something like 36 nil at half time, uh, 56 to 16. As you mentioned, no changes really outside of Davey, but that's a that's a pretty solid replacement there for the Eels. Um, the Rabbitohs get Dane Gagai. You know they lose Johnson, but you know it's still a pretty good, pretty strong side. Um, look, it's a tough one to pick. It's it's a mouthwatering clash to open up round 16 of the. Shortened season, I uh, can't really give you a straight answer, at least on bets. But, of course, in terms of who I'm going to pick, I'm going with my heart. And probably a little bit of my head here. I'm going to say Parramatta. Um, I'll throw it back to you if you want to, to open up our, our bets for the week in which we would have made profit if anyone followed both of us, surprisingly. So, Mr. Matthew Wright, what have you got for us? Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take the under on the points if it's sort of about thirty eight thereabouts. What what are they offering on the under there? Because I, I'm thinking this is gonna be low scoring, and uh, I will with my reasoning. I'll tell you in a hot second. Thirty nine and a half. Thirty nine and a half. Yeah, back the under. So Parramatta have been very good defensively. Uh, the Rabbitohs have a tendency to be very clunky in attack. Saying that, though, Parramatta, 312 points scored. Rabbitohs, 309 points scored. So I'd say take the under, take Parramatta 1-12 to for me, just because I think this is going to be a tight, low-scoring game. Parramatta, we saw it last week, struggle to execute sometimes. Some of those balls going a little bit astray. South's exactly the same. Um, when they're going through their sets, they've got a few errors in them. But both teams overall have been relatively sturdy in defence. And it's worthwhile mentioning the fact that although it is close on the points, you've got to think 56 of those points came just last week uh, against against Manly. So while those do look like impressive, uh, impressive point-scoring stats, these are not two high-scoring teams. I'm going to offer this to you before I run in my analysis. Uh, man, uh, not Manly, South Sydney. I'm looking at the Manly game. South Sydney in the last four weeks have scored, and let's see if I can do some math, 30, 50, 100, 130, nearly 150 points. So nearly half their season total in the last four weeks. 
in the previous five meetings between Parramatta and South Sydney, it's gone over the 39 and a half three times out of the last five. The other two were 22-16 wins to Parramatta. Um, even some more in-depth analysis, if you would like. Three of the last five have been decided by six or less. Four of the last five by 12 or less. And the other one was a 42-24 to 24 win at ANZ Stadium in which... South Sydney scored two tries in the last 10 minutes. So I do like your thinking on, on the Parramatta 1-12, to 12, but I'm not going to quite piggyback off that one. Um, look, I'm not going to lie, it's a tough one for me, uh, trying, to, trying to figure this out. But I'm going to give you Parramatta on the race to 20. I just think, you know, as good as South Sydney have been in attack the last couple of weeks, um, you know, the two, they've conceded at least 10 points in every game. They conceded 24 against the Dragons, 30 against the Cowboys. If you want to go back a little further, 18 against Canberra, who really aren't that much of an attacking side when you compare it to the likes of Parramatta, Penrith, and a full-strength storm. Uh, Newcastle, they concede 20. Uh, again, 20 against Penrith, 22 against the Storm, 28 against the Roosters, 22 very early in the season against Brisbane. So I think Parramatta on the race to 20 at a buck 82. Um, there's some good value in that. And of course, it wouldn't be uh, a Lukey Jobson tip without an anytime try scorer. Um, I am going to go for some cheeky value here. Recognising that we have Matteson and Sean Lane coming up against Bailey Searin and Jaden Sewer, who are very good in attack, but every now and then have a defensive slip up. I'm going to go Ryan Matteson, an anytime try scorer, at 375. I think that's pretty good value. He's one of the premier second rows in the competition, has a pretty good strike rate um, in 2020. If you want to look at some other options, um, Dan Gagai at 325. If he goes up against Wonga Blake, is outstanding value. I also think Michael Jennings at 250 is a shout. Um, but I'm going Eels head to head. Power on the race at 20. Madison 375. Maddie, unless you want to add anything else, Power 1 to 12 and under 39 and a half. Yep. I'll do us on that one then. And uh, we will get on to the next one. The St. George Illawarra Dragons take on the Gold Coast Titans. And uh, do you know what? Up until the point where I saw the team list, I was having a bit of a crisis over this one because the Titans went close last week. They they hung with the Raiders, high-scoring game. Uh, and I thought maybe they might pick the Dragons, but then I've had a look at the team list and it's not pretty viewing. Rain in for Pete's. Peachy goes into 13 for Foto Acre. A uh, bit of a change up on the bench as well as uh, Hipgrave goes to the bench, Fermor into the starting second row, Whitbread comes to the bench as well, and Stone is your other starting second rower. As for the Dragons, no Paul Vaughan this week. Um, he's out. They've they didn't, they've welcomed back Jacob Host from suspension as well. Uh, no Fui Mayona this week. He's out suspended, and Ford as well as Merrin. And Ellis and Britain make up the bench. I I see the Dragons winning this one. I think there could be a bit of a points void just because of that missing quality from the Titans. When you talk about Fotowaker, he's been incredible for them this season. You know, you've got Thompson on the bench as well. Um, Thompson on the wing as well. Don out of the side. You lose a lot of height on the wings when you put in Thompson, especially when he comes up against a side that's got players like Ravalara, La, Ra, Ravalawa and Lomax on that side. And we've seen the Dragons love to go to the sky, uh, especially with Lomax uh, sort of sitting inside. So the Titans are going to have a, a tough time on the edges here. Yeah, I'm definitely joining you with that one on the Dragons. Um, look, I'm not too sure about the Titans lacking some offensive prowess. They still have Brimson and Fogarty who've started to create a fantastic little combination there. Ash Taylor, a lot of pressure has been taken off him. He's had a, I'm not going to say a great, it's not a million dollars a year worthy, but he's having a better last couple of weeks. Yes, they lose Pete's. Mitch Rain comes in, but he's serviceable. As a dummy half, decent distribution, handy in defence. Firma, 
Um, probably more of an impact coming off the bench, but you know we we've seen how good he can be in in the short time he's been there. But the mobility of the Dragons up front, when you compare it to that of the Titans, when you have Laurie Kerr, who again, you know, that's for the most part that's their second string front row, and you know I still have them over Wallace and Jolliffe, although Jolliffe's had a fantastic season. Brazel and Host against Stone and Thurma. I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. Cam McInnes, more of an impact player than Tyron Peachy. And then you look at those backs. Zach Wymax has had a stunning 2020. You and Aitken's had a breakout year. Obviously now off to the Warriors in 21. clune has been fantastic. Norman's been a nice little accompanying piece for, for everything. Matt Dufty, again, you know, doubting his naysayers in 2020. The RAV4, very close to the top to top of the try scoring list. Um, Don is a shot of coming back. He wasn't he wasn't dropped per se more than injured. They thought he was back last week. Obviously wasn't, so Thompson came in. Um, Dragons all the way for me. In terms of tips, they've currently got the line at nine and a half. I don't really know about that one. Um you know, I would like to see that maybe a couple of points shorter, but the fact of the matter is, for the last five, the dragon, I should say, dragons have won the last five. Um, for the last five, they've won by twelve or more. Um, the only one that wasn't a, a twelve plus was twenty four sixteen win uh, September of last year. They played earlier in the season, uh, June twenty, uh, June twentieth, St George up twenty to eight. So I am going to take the Dragons on that nine and a half. Like I said, I prefer it to be a little shorter. You can go alternative, and you can go shorter towards maybe a seven and a half. But I think the nine and a half is still getting some handy value at a buck eighty nine. Of course, I'm going to go Zach Lomax as an end time try scorer. There's just no qualms about it. You know I'm going to add it in there. But uh, he's a great shot at it this week, and paying a buck eighty three. You know what I mean. It's not amazing value, but it could be, you know, it's worth throwing in a same game multi if if you feel uh, ballsy enough to do to do so. I also want to point out that in three of the last five, the second half has been the highest scoring in Dragons games this year, or at least in the last five. Uh, the first half has been the highest scoring in four of the last five for the Dragons. As for the Titans, as I very quickly scroll through here, the first half has been the highest scoring in, that's three out of four, four of the last five. Both sides, the one that wasn't a highest scoring half, it was drawn first half, second half, both being uh, you know 20 points. So I'm going to add first half highest scoring on top of the Dragons at nine and a half on the line and a Lomax anytime try scorer. Okay. Okay, then. So I'm going to go Dragons. I'm going to take the line. I'm going to go Dragons on the line. I'm going to go with the Dragons to win either half. And I'm going to finish that one up with Dragons on the race of 20. Just because they they have a tendency just to, to explode out and have like 20 minutes of absolute brilliance before then they open the door and allow the team the other team back in. So that's that's my thinking on that one, just because we've, we've seen it a few times. Uh, we saw it last week as well. Dragons were basically holding their own and then they, they allowed the other guy back in. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Dragons Race to 20 on that one as well. So uh, I am going to multi that up as well. That's going to be my value multi for the week as well. Ooh, oh, hang on just one second. Oh, let, me pull, let me pull out the same game multi. Matthew, you're right. I, you've got to, give me some, you've got to give me some notice on this. I swear to God, if this is like another 525 like last week, me and Sportsbet, we're having serious conversations. <laughs> Please sponsor a Sportsbet. <laughs> um... All right, Dragons on the nine and a half. Now, I, I will point this one out. Um, <laughs> the Dragons, or well, you can't add the um, Dragons win either half on a same game multi for sports bet, uh, but you can do Dragons to win both halves. 
it's that not confident, you know, not confident. Well, Drop it. Well, the multi, if you're sure that you want to keep it as the value, can only be dragons nine and a half in the race to twenty, and it gives you an amazing dollar ninety five. <laughs> I quit. I quit. I quit. I quit. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Enter technical difficulties here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I single it up then. Just single it up and put a put a bit of money on it. Then that'll be the only way to go for that one. Then. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. And with that absolute disappointment, we'll get on to the next one. <laughs> Speaking of disappointments, the Brisbane Broncos take on the Sydney Roosters. Um, and, yeah, they, they're, without their, they're without their head coach. Uh, again, now, as uh, it's official, he is, he's gone. There's no more excuses this week. It's a must-win game. Uh, and what a time to try out a new halves combination. Again, O'Sullivan comes in for his first game in, what, 14 months? Paired with Dearden. It's not going to be pretty viewing. Uh, Pakes comes in at the nine. Um, God, what, Croft, Riki, Bullimore and Hopawati make up your bench. I can see Croft potentially moving into the sixth shirt. I mean, it's, it's kind of got to be done. You need that experience. As for the Roosters, they welcome back Boyd Cordner and Daniel Tupo as well. I mean, they're, they're pretty much unchanged from there. I'm I'm predicting a two point anytime try scorer straight out the gates. Um, just <laughs> just make do it I just put the roosters time. on the head to head too? Roosters head to head. Roosters thirteen plus. Daniel Tupo anytime try scorer. Yeah. Um, was it, I think it was either last week or the week before I called for a Sullivan and Dean to be given a shot. Um, don't know if this was the game I was expecting that to happen though. To be completely honest. Don't really agree with having Brody Croft there in the 14. I think Tyson Gamble is more of a utility um, than Croft. So if Croft is going to be there, I'd just rather not see him in the 17 at all. <laughs> yeah, this is not going to be very pretty viewing if you're a, if you're a Bronco supporter. I mean, we can try and analyse this as much as you guys might want, but at the end of the day, the only potential fair fight... Oh, the, the only area that potentially I see the Broncos getting up in is the Battle of the Locks. I think Carrigan will have a better game than Isaac Liu, potentially David Fafita over Boyd Cordner. But that's about where it ends. I, it's just I don't see it being very pretty viewing. Um, so we'll just on that go straight into the, the betting analysis here. Uh, the line is currently 25 and a half. And I'm taking it. I, I'm sorry, Broncos fans. I, you know, have a ton of respect for the organisation, and and you know what what's happened in the past. But yeah, if we're not going to get into that conversation. I'm just going to say that a lot of your backroom staff needs to go, including the man who called Seabold to cancer, because for him to call Seabold to cancer, knowing full well that he backed that hiring, pot kettle black. Um, Roosters twenty five and a half at a buck ninety. I'm jumping on not the Tupo train, but I'm going to jump on the Carl Flanagan train at three thirty. I'm going to try and find some value in here for for you guys. Flanagan at three thirty for an anytime try scorer. If someone is going to score, it will be Katoni Stags for the Broncos. Do I think it's going to happen? I don't really know, but. At $3.30, I'm going to throw Stags in there as well. He was the Broncos' best last week by country mile. He, he's a ball magnet. I, yeah, if anyone's going to try and keep the Broncos in it, like we saw last week against the, the, the Dragons, it's going to be Katoni Stags. So Roosters on the line. Flanagan at $3.30. Stags at $3.30. Um, if you go on a same game multi, just for, as of 5.50 on Tuesday afternoon, it drops down to a 24 and a half. If you throw those two together in a same game multi, oh, those three together, sorry, Flanagan, Stags, and the 24 and a half, it's 23.25. So that's going to be my value 
multi of the week. Um, it, you know, it's hard not to put a cup of coffee on that right now, to be completely honest, but I'm going to wait until payday on Thursday. But the Roosters multi is my value multi of the week. That's about all the analysis I can give on that one, Matt. You got anything else to add? Um, so what's what's mine? What's my, what's my uh, my number for that one then? Because what I've got two for any time. What's the over? Uh, Forty six and a half. Um, hmm. Go the over. Go two for. And go the line as well. That's going to be mine, and that's going to be my value. And I swear to God, if this is something like five twenty-five, laptops are flying. <laughs> Do you really want to know? Go on, go on, give give it to me straight, Doc. <laughs> Three forty. Three forty. Are you sports bet? Sort <laughs> your stuff out, man. A real talk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it today. I'm fully not in the mood for this stuff. And you got this. You got three forty. I'm taking a nearly a fifty point over, a, a plus, a, a minus twenty five <laughs> on a handicap start, and a player that's been out injured for what two months at this point as an anytime try scorer. You're gonna give me three twenty five. Why don't you just come to my house and tattoo the word mug into my forehead? What, you know what? what time is it over there? Over there? What? It's what nine AM over there. It's like yeah, like this is literally the start of my day, and I'm already <laughs> absolutely fuming. I, uh, you know what? Sack off sports bet. Use Neds. We don't want you any more sports bet. When's the whiskey getting pulled out? Uh honest to God, I'm, I'm the whiskey won't even be getting drunk. It'll just be used to bottle someone at this rate. I'm not in the mood. Go to the next game. Go to the Go next, next game. game. Right then, we've taken a few deep breaths. We're, we're back to where we need to be. It's the Warriors versus the Knights. Warriors, you know, they welcome back Katoa. Huge boost uh, for them. You know, they, it was apparent that he was missing last week. Um, they just lost a little bit of impact in their forwards. You know, no discredit to to the boys who came in and did the job, but when you've got Katoa missing, it is blatantly obvious uh, in the Warriors' pack. As for the Knights, Mason Lino finally uh, gets to make a Knights appearance um, after being bumped way, way, way down the roster. Um, Man is in the nine shirt, Lino in the six. Um, I mean... You, you've got to you've got to think that Lino's got to take his chances here. I'd have maybe even liked to have seen him in the nine shirt, to be honest. But obviously they've they know what they're doing. They work with these players. He sees him as a six, and that's where they're going to use him. And I'm expecting a big game out of him. Yeah, this is a a huge chance here. I think for Mason Lino to to really come in and try and cement that spot at least for the rest of the year. The, it's just a war path right now. That that's really, really bad on the injury front up there in Newcastle. But they're 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 soldiering on, they're still going. Kurt Mann back into the line. I I do prefer that. I think Yeah, he's he's looked really good. He's looked really good. Um, as a hooker, he's able to dart down the blind side um, a little bit quicker than I think Braley and um, McCulloch were able to. Although you know he can't discredit what McCulloch did while he while he came down, um, it does stifle Kalen Ponger a little bit. If Man is in the six, that that's one thing that has been pointed out not only in Supercoach but in you know on the actual field. So having Lino back there, it'll probably mean that Pierce is more of the uh, more of the playmaker. Lino's the supporter with Ponger out the back. But I think that's a good move. I believe that's the only. Uh, yeah, it's the only change so far. They've got Brady Jones, Chris Randall, and Tex Hoy sitting there on the sideline just in case with Toa uh, needing to pass the head assessment protocol. Paul Turner probably a little bit unlucky to be dropped, if we're being completely honest. I thought he had an outstanding game for the Warriors last week, but Harris Vita comes back in after concussion protocol last week they keep the eels boys for another week jennings on the wing alvaro on the bench but i don't really know how that will go um knowing that they're back in the Parramatta bubble next week um 
it's hard just to not go past the Knights here. It's, I'm not going to say it's an easy week for tipping, but it ha- yeah, I haven't really been challenged on on these first four games so far. Um, so I'm going with the Knights here on this one. I Yeah, I mean, the Warriors you know, had a great comeback last week against the Dogs, ruining their chances of a 4-3. Bastards. But... You know, credit to them. They, they had a fantastic second half and really pulled it back. The Knights, not at all convincing against the Cowboys, but much like we said with Parramatta, a win is a win. Um, last five times that these teams have played, and you know, you associate these two teams with a little bit of expansive football, they've only gone over the over once. Twice, sorry. I can't do math. Um, but the over in one of these games was a 45.5. Uh, it was a 24 to 20 win. For the Warriors, uh, these teams did play earlier in the year before the COVID lockdown. Newcastle twenty to nil winners over the Warriors. The Knights have also won three of the past five, and with you know arguably the better record, the Knights need this one. The Knights really, really need this one to try you know to cement themselves as you know a potential outsider for for the top four for that second bite of the cherry. Currently a point back on the Roosters and the Raiders with the Roosters with a huge points differential and, you know, a huge point booster coming up this week against the Broncos. So there's, you know, a big time need for the Knights to get up on this, you know, to stay ahead of the Rabbitohs, to put some pressure on the Raiders, who we'll talk about later on. So I'm going to go with the Knights on a a six-point line. Um, That's currently what they're at at the moment. I'm going to... Look, I'm going to have a dig for a first first try scorer here. I haven't suggested one of these in a hot minute. Naden was the last time that I, I did that, and it kind of bit me in the butt. Um, but just take note, because um, this, is, this is my quote-unquote value single. Um, but I think the Warriors have struggled with containing fullbacks in, in recent times. Ponga didn't have a great game last week. He's going to want to come out against you know, a pretty good fullback in Roger Tuovasacek and uh, you know stamp his mark on the on this night side as they run into the finals. He's going to have to take some of the responsibility with you know a five eight who really hasn't played much in the last twelve months. So Kalen Ponga at eleven dollars for a first try scorer. That's going to be my value single of the week. I think that's a huge shout. Uh, other honourable mentions, if you want to go digging, you have Roger Tuovasashek at $13. He always seems to play well. Um, he is 263 for an anytime try scorer. I'm going to suggest that as well. Um, that'll do it for me, though. I'm not going to try and go too crazy here. I say that as, a, you know, as I suggest an $11 tip. But Knights... On the six-point line, Ponga first try scorer, Roger anytime at two sixty-three. Okay, so I'm gonna go with a bit of an outside one here. I'm gonna go Lino anytime, just because I think he's gonna be more likely to back himself through the line, especially when you've got a player like Crossland on the bench who's just waiting to take his spot as his Tex Hoy. So Lino anytime. I'm gonna go Tuala anytime, and I'm gonna take Knights on the line as well. That's that's going to be how I go for that one. All right. So, if anyone's ballsy enough, then I'll pull the multi out on you as well, Matty, because I think that's got that's got a shout of being somewhat decent. If anyone's ballsy enough to take what I tipped, it's paying sixty two fifty at the moment. If you go the Ponga first try scorer, Roger anytime six and a, uh, the Knights on what would be a five and a half currently for the same game multi feature. So, I think it's worth you know it's worth a cheap cup of coffee. It's worth your Hungry Jack's $2 coffee. Um, but you, Mr. Matthew Wright, going with the line, which, again, with the same game multi, would be a five-and-a-half, Tuala and Lino. Tuala, who's currently paying two thirty, Lino at four fifty. Oh, this might be your value, mate. Fourteen fifty on that one. All right, okay, that's bad. So we uh, am I wrong in saying that this will be your value bet of the week, or are you gonna see how we go? Yeah, that's that offers way more value than that three dollars 
that Sportsbet kindly offered us last time. On to the next one, and it is the Cronulla Sharks taking on the North Queensland Cowboys. The Sharks last week looking better. Uh, the Cowboys looking somewhat improved, um, but still not enough to get the win. They were ultimately nil, but in a 12 nil game, it just screams close game all over. Um, I did come into this before looking at the teams thinking, you know what, the Cowboys might be a shout this week. And then you look at all their missing players and look at the change-ups have gone through. So O'Neill in for Opacek, uh, Tulagi in the centre, Holmes on the wing, Arcee in the six, Molo comes to his start, uh, comes in as his starting prop, Cotter in the nine shirt, Maguire goes to 13, Granville on the bench, as well as Aziata, Gilbert and uh, Jensen. It's a lot of changes there against a shark side, but love to post points, love to bust teams up the middle. And it just looks like there is way too much talent missing for them to stand up on this one. Yeah, it's. Uh... I'm not going to lie, this is the first time I've looked at this particular game's team list and I've just kind of gone into a brain fart trying to comprehend everything that, that you've just mentioned. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say it's pretty view. I'm just going to go straight off the bat and say I've got Sharks on the head-to-head -head here. Um, look, here, here's an interesting one for you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say who this is because it's a very prominent person in um, the Rugby League Facebook community, shall we say. But he had William Kennedy under Valentine Holmes for for a fullback, I believe. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure he had Kennedy under, under Holmes on his top 20 rankings list. And uh, I'm not really sure about that because I think Kennedy has been pretty superb. For, for the Sharks, Holmes is now stuck on the wing with drink water at fullback. The hammer has come and gone. The cheetah has moved out of the side. Um, and, yeah, the Sharks have just, I think they're going to be too good here. Talakai out, Britton Macora, as you mentioned, back in. Um, it's not like Talakai's done anything wrong, really, either. He's had a fantastic month, but it's hard to keep out a, a Kiwi international. So the fact that he's done it as long as he has is... Has been, you know, a credit to him. Uh, not sure. I don't really know if Fafita will play. I don't think he will. The the rumor I've heard is he's probably a week away, but we'll see about that. Um, yeah, too many changes for me. To for the Cowboys, they looked about as good as I think they're going to get last week. Um, against the Knights, they they gave it a red hot crack. Don't get me wrong, but it, you know, a red hot crack wasn't good enough. Um, and the Sharks, who you know, they're at a dollar twenty five. It probably should be a little closer than that. It probably should be you know a dollar twenty eight and three seventy five instead of a dollar twenty five and four bucks. But the Sharks, I think, will put the uh, the Cowboys to the sword. They they have played earlier this year, twenty six to sixteen win. For Cronulla, um, oddly enough, drink quarter was the first try scorer. The Sharks have won four of the last five. The last time that they lost was 2018, back when it was 1300 Smile Stadium. Um, with this being the Sharks' home game and the Sharks winning, let's see, one, two, I can't do math. No, I've got a relatively good home record, the Sharks. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with the Sharks on 13 plus here at 210. I'm not 100% sure on that one. This has the potential to be a close, game, uh, a close game, but it really depends on what Cowboys decide to show up. Um, don't really, I don't really know how they're going to react without Jason Tamalolo. So Sharks 13 plus. I'm going to go with a little bit of value here and say Sean Johnson at 375. For an anytime try score, is due a try. And I think this week's going to be the week to get it. If you do look at the Cowboys, Kyle Felt's always very hard to go past for an anytime try scorer. Uh, Justin O'Neill at 433, I think, is good, very good value. Um, the Sharks are very strong attacking side. Uh, I'm scrolling well down to around six to see a game that wasn't rain affected, that went 
under the offered total. Um, 43 and a half is what we're looking at. So I'm going to go with that as well. Sharks 13 plus over 43 and a half. Johnson anytime. Yeah, so I'm going to go the over as well. I'm going to go uh, the Sharks on the try bet just to cover that uh, that gap as well. I'm going to take the, like I said, the over. I'm going to go Katoa anytime just because, well, one, Katoa is incredible this season. And two, he comes up against Valentine Holmes if the, if the numbers line up as they should. Um, he'll come up against Val Holmes. And the last time that Val Holmes played wing for the Cowboys, it was because they rushed him back after injury and he wasn't ready to play fullback yet, which leads me to believe that he is likely being rushed back again. So coming up against Katoa, who can go over players and go around players or just straight forward if he fancies it through players, I, I see Katoa getting over for this one and I don't think Val Holmes is going to be the man to stop him. Completely agree with you on that. Yeah. Okay. So on to the next one then. The Penrith Panthers look to keep their uh, well their unbeaten run intact as they continue to break records on a weekly basis at this point. Currently three points clear of the ladder. It's just you you look at this Tigers side and you think even with Grant back at this point. It's, you know, so the Panthers, they're without um, Coruscant. You know, Naden back into the three-shirt tour, comes back onto the wing. Fisher-Harris into the 13. Yo covers uh, covers that gap as well. Leota comes to, from the bench to the starting prop. Um, as I mentioned there, Yo into the 11 jersey. Their bench doesn't, doesn't look any weaker for having those players missing. I mean, you've got May, Leniu, Burns, Tetevano all on the bench. It's just how do you look at this Panthers side and think, okay, there's there's a weakness in there somewhere just based on how these players are playing this year? Uh, you don't. I think putting it very simply, you don't. If there is one weakness potentially going through the middle, um, yeah, Yo going to the edge, you know, whether that means he ends up defending in the middle or whether he decide, you know, whether he he sticks as a true edge or Potentially, as, as we do see, there is a certain Kurt Capewell in the 19 that may come back a little earlier than expected from from his CL injury. So he could slot into the uh, end of the 11 where Yo is Yo, goes to the 13, Fisher-Harris to prop, Leota down, and you go from there. Um, but I don't really think that there's much of a weakness. The, the Tigers do get Harry Grant back, uh, the, the inevitable... Rookie of the year, but I don't think that's going to be too much of a too much of a gain when when you just look at how good this Panthers side is. Um, ideally, I want this one to be close because you know for for another week I'd love to be singing. You know, we are ninth again, the mighty Tigers. We are ninth again. Uh, I apologise to anyone's eardrums if they have burst, um, but. Yeah, look, you know, the fact that we both have the Dragons getting up and the Tigers, I'm assuming you don't have the Tigers this week. No. Um, there's a chance <laughs> There's a chance that they will drop down from from ninth spot. Um, I'm not touching an over-under. I'm not touching a margin. I'm just going three straight try scorers. Uh, Brent Naden at $2, fantastic value for me. When you have the likes of Crichton, To'o and Mansell all at odds on or better, I'm absolutely going to take Brent Naden at even money I, on a on a great streak. I think he'll he'll just be slicing through. Potentially could get a double. Um, in terms of some value, I think it's going to be Liam Martin that is running at Benji Marshall. Not, or, I mean, you could pick either half really. Both Brooks and Marshall haven't been great defensively this season, but I think Liam Martin is going to be the bustling second rower that Cleary will put over from short range. And I think Cleary himself will get a try. He's gone a couple of weeks without one. If there's going to be a week, it's going to be a Tigers defense that does slide very well. But as a result, because they slide a lot, and you know, partially because they're having to defend so much, you might see Cleary jink back in, much like what Jerome Luai did last week, jinking back in, trying to get in closer to the posts. So Panthers, I mean, that, that's the obvious one. 
But Brett Naden, who's at $2, Cleary and uh, Martin, both at $3.10. If you want to multi them together, 20 bucks. Okay. Some decent value there. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go with a bit of an outside shout here. So I'm going to go Tor anytime. I'm going to go Fisher Harris anytime. And I'm going to go Panthers on the line. And the reason that I say Fisher Harris in there is um, I think with him playing in the 13 shirt, he's going to get a lot more ball. I think he's going to have a little bit more freedom in the middle as well. So when the Panthers do go straight up the middle, um, as you've seen as they do with uh, Yo plenty, um, I think that Fisher Harris has that ability to split the line and coming up against what? If, if you're looking at the middles, I know that Brooks and Marshall tend to defend on the edges, but then just inside you've got all the likes of what you've got Grant defending in the middle, who is pretty solid defensively, but has been seen falling off tackles. Um if if he's going if you're gonna go straight up the middle, Ali McKayley, you know, two very good forwards, no disputing. But I just think Fisher Harris has the ability to get a, a bit of a step on get a bump on, go through, and um, potentially go over untouched as well. Oddly enough, and this could be a very good sign or a very bad sign, both of our multis, $20 a pop. Um, I, I do want to uh, say this before we quickly move on to the next game, and we probably should have said this at the start, but I'm sorry, I only thought of it. Obviously, the team list changed from here on out. We keep records of everything, so we have an Excel, we have an Excel spreadsheet that we have kept from round 13 onwards, at some point, I'm going to go back and make sure you know, that, that we get each round. If a player doesn't play, we cut the tip. We don't we don't say that the player coming in takes their spot. We cut the tip. The multi becomes an NA because we know most bookies will just avoid the entire multi. Um, at least that's what Sportsbet does. So just keep that in mind. Don't get angry with us if we go 13 or 28 one week, but... You know, it, it could have been thirteen or thirty-two because four players didn't play. So yeah. just just keep just keep that in mind if you do watch this, because we know a lot of our views come right before game time or, or right after. So just just something to keep in mind. Yeah. Okay, and we'll move on to the next one. The Melbourne Storm take on the Manly Sea Eagles, and the Storm, it's safe to say, have gone through a fair few changes. So Seve onto the wing. Uh, Jesse Bromwich comes back from suspension, as does, uh, well, not suspension, but injury, brings back uh, Munster and Hughes as well, as they're both being cleared to play this week. Asper Solomona into the 13th shirt, Eisenhuth into the second row. Then you look at the bench, Hines, Faso Malawi, Earl and Shawnig. So essentially you've got two backs slash utilities on the bench with two forwards as well, which is... A strange one on me, um, but we, we saw last week that if a storm side can only be limited to conceding 14 points, that chances are they're probably going to score points this week and they're probably going to have a, a good old crack against a single side who's, let's face it, their season's pretty much over at this point. I mean, when you look to the ladder... The Seagulls are one of four teams sitting on 12 points at the minute. Uh, they're third down, though, due to their points differential of a minus 90. Their, their season's pretty much over at this point. Injuries really, really limiting that. I mean, Gashevsky's in the centre this week because there's no Suli. Um, Paseka's back. He come, Well, sorry, Paseka's back to the bench. Vanua Blake is back um, there. So it's... There's there's way too much, way too much quality in that storm side still, even with the amount of players that they have missing. Yeah, um, big time changes for for the storm, but like, like you mentioned, the the depth of the Sea Eagles here is getting absolutely you know dug up and scraped out of the barrel, um, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. You, it's just ravaged with injury. Uh, both rosters, but man, manly especially. Um, Tavita Funa back, you know, in fullback. Look, it wouldn't surprise me if we saw Hopawadi come into the lineup. Funa go to um, centre, and probably Kepi being left out with uh, uh, Jackie G jumping onto the interchange. But 
who knows with, with Des Hasler. Um, as for the Storm, as you mentioned, two utility backs. Not sure about that one. I think we could see some changes. The only you know, potential way that I could see that working out is if they use Nico Hines as kind of like a roaming lock uh, for, you know, 25, 30 minutes. Uh, or you can potentially see Sandor Earl coming on as a, you know, as a similar or as like a second row centre-ish kind of player. I don't really know how you'd use him. Um, Chris Lewis, Albert Vette, and Luma Lumi. Uh, in the reserves, I haven't seen him before, Isaac Lumalumi. So generally, when you see something like that, you think potentially he debuts on the cards. No news, no news yet, but it, you know it's possible. Um, look, the betting odds probably shouldn't be as far out as they are. The Storm currently at a dollar twenty, Manly at four fifty. I am going to go the Storm. Uh, they do get uh, head referee Cameron Smith. Back into the lineup, which I think will be you know a huge addition. I'll get the spine of Pat Nows and uh, Munster Hughes and and referee Smith. Uh, quite you know, it's it's quite a beautiful spine to look at just for anyone. Um, so I am going to go the Storm. We will have a cheeky look at, at the uh, the rest of the odds at the moment because Sportsbet just loaded those up. Um, I think you have to go with one of the centres as an anytime try scorer if Jackie G is going to be sitting there. Uh, I'm going to go with Justin Olam at $2.30 as a anytime try scorer just to try and eke a little bit of value out of that. You can make a very good argument for Cameron Munster maybe for any time try scorer, but I'm not going to. Not going to try and do that. I, t- I told you guys. I told you I'd have a visitor. Um, you could make an argument for half half the players, to be completely honest. Um, but I'm going to say play this as a single because it, there's not much value if you're trying to look for a same game multi. I don't think that this is going to go over points. Um, that being said, watch it be like a 60-point game. But in the last five that these two have played, it hasn't gone over 42 points. The line currently is 43 and a half. I'm going to go with a Storm. And this is currently offered on Sportsbet at 310. Storm 10 and a half and under. Oh, sorry, at 360. Storm on the 10 and a half line and under 45 and a half points. So all many time try scorer and then the 10 and a half into 45 and a half on the under. Okay. So I'm... I, I don't like the look of this game. I don't like the look of this game one bit, to be honest. Um, I, I don't get why the Seagulls don't just use Hopawati. They might as well have got nothing to lose. Their season's as good as over. Blood some of the youngsters, bring them up, get them ready for 21. Um, with that being said, I think the only tips that I can give on this one is Monster anytime, Adokar anytime, and uh, just take just take the storm on the head-to-head. Uh, just play that safe. I know that someone um, in one of the punting groups had Adokar as the as an anytime try scorer last week, and he missed out on something ridiculous because of it. So maybe yeah, we, maybe Josh is yeah yeah we put, we posted that on the page. Missed out on something like fifteen grand or, or something like that off a five dollar bet because Adokar didn't get over. That's something yeah. something that we we'd both tipped as well. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking he gets over this week. I'm thinking Monster gets over this week, and just just take the storm on the head to head because the seagulls sometimes just turn up and just create problems for teams. But yeah, I don't I don't like this game one bit. So we're going to get off this one now and uh, on to the final game. So the round is seen out with the Canberra Raiders taking on the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs and the Raiders have made a smart decision in my honest opinion and that is no Corey Harawira Nara this week. Um, I just think it probably be in his best interest not to be a part of this game as well. As for the Bulldogs, plenty of changes. Um, you know, let's, let's start with the back line. Watenis Lesniak is back. Lewis, Foran, are you six and seven? Um, Napa's back as well. Jackson's in the 11 shirt. Tolman's in the 13. Renoff to among her back to the bench. Um, Katoa stays in the 14 shirt as ever. And then you've got Britt and Dory in 16 and 17, respectively. 
Um, no Luke Thompson this week. Um, you know, would this be a game that you'd realistically want him in? Coming up against a few of the English boys as well, he'd probably know how they function, how they move. When you've got Bateman and Whitehead that have just been causing problems all over the field. Williams as well in the seven shirt, been playing really well. He'd have probably been able to offer some interesting insights, but... You know, not to be this week, so he's uh, he's a casualty of the Bulldogs. Yeah, uh, it's a bit of an interesting one. The official word is he was rested, but yeah, if we're being completely honest, he's not had a very good uh, transition over from the Super League to the NRL. Um, no, Jake Avarillo as well, same thing. The official word is rested, but he just came back from a couple of weeks off, so be it some more injury maintenance perhaps. Otherwise, it could just be a straight out, yeah, he didn't play well enough last week, he dropped. Um, uh, yeah, look, I'd, more more, uh, more ins and outs than the hokey pokey for, for the dogs. As for as for the Raiders, I think this was part of a, the contract, as for, for this year at least, that Har- Harawira and Naira doesn't play against the dogs. I'm not 100% sure about that one, though. We're not... Uh, we're not going to go too far into into contract stuff. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we're both going the Raiders here. I, there is no no way that I can see the Dogs winning. I do see them potentially making it close, so I'm going to take the Dogs on the line. I am going Raiders head to head, but Dogs the current line is 17 and a half. Four of the last five games have, that the Dogs have been in have been decided by six or less. Um. You could go five of the last six if you go back to the St. George game. The last five five games that these two teams have played, the, the uh, highest margin has been 16. So I'm going to take that 17.5 for the Dogs uh, in terms of an anytime try scorer. He hurt me last week in a multi, um, but I think potentially we could see Jared Croker get over for, for an anytime try scorer. He hasn't scored for a couple of weeks. I think he's due. Um, and if there is, yeah, if there's a better team to do it, it's going to be the Dogs who can leak a lot of points. Uh, he's currently at two thirty. Again, like like you said, interesting that they dropped Thompson. You would think that he's he would give some valuable insight. You have Bateman, Sutton, Whitehead, and obviously you know Hodgson on the sideline. But yeah, you know, the, the three palms running right at the moment. Sutton had his best game last week. I'm going to go. For Whitehead, any time as well at 3.30, you could make a strong case for Bateman or Whitehead, but we'll steal a little bit of value there with Whitehead at $3.30. So this could be a handy multi. So I'm going to very quickly do that. Uh, Dogs at the 17 and a half with Croker at to whoops at 230 we don't want jack whiten although he could very well go in for a double again too and elliot whitehead 26 25 if anyone feels game enough to try that one okay right well i'm gonna go i'm gonna go the over i'm gonna go parley anytime and i think i think that'll do me for that one i don't want to overstretch myself on, on this one just because again the Raiders have a tendency sometimes against these smaller teams to to switch off uh, and leak a few points. Saw it last week, ran close by Gold Coast. But again, it comes down to the Raiders have something to play for. They're jostling for them final spots um, against you know some pretty good opposition. The Bulldogs, their season's over, but they are trying to avoid the spoon. So I think the Bulldogs could potentially show up and cause some problems, so I'm I'm wary of this one. So I'm going to go Papali anytime. I'm going to go. I'm going to take Raiders on the try bet. Just, uh, on just the for safety. Yeah. Okay. And, well, uh, let, me, let me let me go find that. I'm blind as a bat tonight. I don't know why the try bet. Here we go. Raiders six and a half. Papali and over forty two and a half. Eight twenty five. Okay, some decent value there. Not bad. Uh, we've got both our values, but your best bet of the week, sir. Best bet would be... Ooh, let me have a think on this one um, while I also go back over the fixtures. I'm going to go Sharks Cowboys. Going to be my best bet of the week. Are you going that as a multi or a single? 
Um, now nah, we're gonna go Luther. with Luther. Ooh, JK. All right. Sharks multi. All right. Well, I'll do the same thing I did last week. I'll give you a best bet uh, multi and a best bet on the single. Um, best bet for the multi. I'm honestly going to go with the Parramatta one. Para, the race 20, and Matheson, any time to try scorer. That's your best bet for, for the multi in terms of any time. Uh, Brent Naden, anytime try scorer at two bucks. Right. Okay, then. Well, I think that is going to do it there, then. We have taken you through all the team lists, given all our tips to the best of our limited ability. Um, as ever, thank you to the guys over at RCR for sponsoring this video. Head to their website. They're going along the bottom there. Use code CKM for 20% off. And as ever, to you guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate your support. If you are enjoying it, leave a like. If you've got any feedback for us, leave a comment. And, you know, stick around, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll keep on producing this kind of content for you.